Welcome to a lesson on determining the antiderivative of a vectored valued function. This is also called indefinite integration of a vectored valued function. Notice to perform indefinite integration of a vectored valued function, we integrate each component of the vectored valued function. It's important to remember that the antiderivative of a vectored valued function is a family of vectored valued functions such that if big R of t is the antiderivative, then the derivative of big R of t is equal to little r of t. And in some cases, we are given an initial condition, and in this case, we can find the exact antiderivative vectored valued function. We'll take a look at this case in the next video. Let's take a look at our first example. And again, in order to find this indefinite integral, we want to integrate each component, which means we'll have the indefinite integral of five divided by t squared, which we'll write as five t to the power of negative two dt times i, and then we'll have minus the integral of four square root t, which we'll write as four t to the power of one half dt times j. And now we'll apply the power rule of integration to find our indefinite integrals. So we're going to add one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So we'll have five times t to the power of negative two plus one is negative one, divided by negative one, plus a constant of integration, which we'll call c sub one, times i minus four times t to the power of one half plus one, that's t to the three halves, divided by three halves, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, or multiplying by two thirds, plus c sub two times j. Now let's go ahead and clean this up. Notice how we have five divided by negative one, that's negative five t to the negative one, or negative five divided by t, plus c sub one times i, minus here, nothing simplifies, so we have eight-thirds t to the three-halves plus c sub two times j. So this is the antiderivative, but notice how c sub one and c sub two result in a constant vector where the i component is c sub one and the j component would be negative c sub two because of the minus. So this can be written a different way. If we let vector c, a constant vector, be equal to c sub one i, and then it would be minus c sub two j, we can give the antiderivative as negative five divided by t i minus eight thirds t to the three halves plus our constant vector c. Let's take a look at a second example. Notice in this case, our vector valued function has three components, so now we'll have three indefinite integrals. Let's write the first indefinite integral as two times integral of one divided by t dt times i minus the integral of sine t dt j, and then we'll have plus the integral of secant squared two t dt k. Well, the integral of one divided by t with respect to t would be natural log t. So here we have two natural log t plus c sub one i. The integral of sine t is negative cosine t, so because of this minus, we'll have plus cosine t plus c sub two j. And now for this last integral, we'll have to perform u substitution, where the inner function two t will be u. So if u is equal to two t, differential u is equal to two dt, dividing both sides by two. Notice how dt is equal to one half du. So if we wrote this in terms of u, we would have one half the integral of secant squared u d 
du. And since the integral of secant squared u is equal to tangent u, we'll have plus one-half tangent instead of u to t plus c sub three times k. So now we do have our antiderivative, or the indefinite integral, but because of the c sub one, c sub two, and c sub three, we can let vector c, a constant vector, be equal to c sub one i plus c sub two j plus c sub three k. So now we can write this as two natural log t i plus cosine t j plus one half tangent two t k plus our constant vector c. That'll do it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll talk about how we can do these types of problems when we're given an initial condition and therefore find the exact antiderivative function. I hope you found this helpful.